All right, we definitely had some failed injectors in here. It's amazing the truck was running as good as it was. Look at five and six. All right, there we go. There she is, head removed. Definitely signs of injectors that were failed or failing. Number five, all that carbon buildup, and that uh, injector spray pattern. Still cross hatching on the cylinder wall, so that's good. Let's go look and see how we're jacking up the engine. All right, so we removed the 18 millimeter engine mount bolt right there. I relieved some pressure on it with the jack and the block right here up under the AC compressor mounting point. That's a good hard point for getting that jack in there. And we may have to remove that second motor mount, but I'm gonna try to see if I have enough room to get that oil pan off of there, just like that. Make sure you relieve the pressure on the bolt, which is an 18 millimeter. The engine mount bolt, which is laying right there. Relieve the pressure with the jack, back it off, take it out. Those two slots right there in the middle of the screen, um, there's two 15 millimeter nuts in there that you need to back off for the transmission cross member and that'll allow you to also jack the motor up to get the oil pan out all right we have the uh, 18 millimeter engine mount bolts removed we have the jack up underneath the AC hard point right up under here and we've jacked the engine up about three inches and I'm just now pulling the oil pan out, trying to film and do it with one hand. Maybe, there we go. And that's the first time it's been off since it left the fact. All right, so now we're getting our rod bolts removed. Those are 12 millimeter. They're on fairly tight. Uh, so you're going to need a breaker bar or a bigger wrench or a stout torque wrench to remove those. That one's still installed. We're taking out number three here. And what we're going to do is we're going to push the piston up through the cylinder bore. And it's a little dark in there, but you can kind of see up in there. Um, you're going to want to make note of which direction your caps are facing. There's numbers on the inside of that rod right there and the end cap. Um, and those face the driver's side on my truck. So make note of which way your bearing is installed in your rod and which direction these numbers are facing. You also, before you start pushing the rod up, you're gonna wanna cover this crank right in here um, with a paper towel or something to protect it so in case if the piston or the rod drops back down, you don't nick the crank or scratch the surface in any way. So piston number four was a little sticky. I ended up cutting a piece of wood to fit between the crank journal. And I put the piece of wood right there in that rod end. And I tapped this with the rubber mallet um, to, to drive that sticky piston out. Um, if you have pistons that are kind of catching a ridge in your cylinder or just real carbonized rings or piston, this might help you. So there's piston number four, pretty, pretty well carbonized, um, real dirty because of that uh, cracked injector. Um, I had to use uh, that block of wood between the crank journals and tapped on the bottom side of that rod. But uh, we'll see what she looks like. Pull her out. Definitely time for an overhaul. Not too bad. All 
right, here we go. Broken rings on one, cylinder number two, three is okay, four is okay, broken rings on five, and broken rings on number six. There's our new piston mounted on our rod assembly. This is out of my 2004 and a half Cummins 5.9. We're in the middle of an in-frame overhaul due to four broken rings. Um, in, in four cylinders, we had four broken compression rings in multiple pieces. The block looks good, and I will get a shot of that later. So basically, I cleaned everything with parts cleaner really well and lubricated it with, uh, with Lucas. I like using it as an assembly lube because it sticks to everything from the piston ring grooves to, uh, to all of the uh, rod end bores and wrist pin and everything. It, it, it works really nice as an assembly lube. So that being said, there seems to be some confusion, um, people mounting pistons and mounting them backwards and whatnot. So this long side of the piston faces towards the driver's side of the truck. And basically what you're going to want to do is mount your piston so that the, the front demarcation is obviously lined up with the front of the truck and that the long side of the piston is facing the intake or the driver's side. So once you've located that and you know which way your piston goes back together, you lubricate everything properly and slide that wrist pin in there. Make sure it's seated up against the other circle clip and then go ahead and use your snap ring pliers and just seat that circle clip in there. And it's really important that that circle clip seats in that bore, so inspect it carefully. And uh, so once you've done that, now we move on to the rings. So this is a Cummins PAI overhaul kit and it's very detailed and they've done a great job in laying out all the information that you need, both on this spec chart here for your compression ring, your scraper, and your oil control ring. So, before I did any of this, I measured all of my ring gaps in my cylinder bores. And this kit was incredibly accurate. I didn't have to file one ring, and that saved me a lot of work. And so what I found, within one or two thousandths is that my compression ring, which the quick serve spec lists as 11 to 23 thousandths, my compression rings were all 20 to 22 thousandths, which is right there within spec. Um, our intermediate ring, um, we averaged about 44 thousandths with our ranging, recommended ranging being 35 thousandths to 54 thousandths. And then our oil control ring, all at about 20 thousandths so that made installing the rings a lot easier for for us the consumer and so next that process went as follows i installed the oil control first i made sure that all of those uh the piston ring grooves were lubricated really well with lucas then we did our intermediate ring or our scraper ring making note on all rings of which which side was the top marker on each ring the oil control ring as specified by our spec sheet there was marked with numbers and that indicated that that side went up our scraper ring says top on there that's pretty easy to see so you can't get that mixed up as well as our compression ring right here so, clocking the rings. The, pist the Cummins engine rotates clockwise uh, when viewed from the front. So what that means, and my understanding of it, is that the work side of the piston is on the left side when viewed from the front of the truck. So the recommended ring clocking is approximately 180 degrees from the left side your first ring groove on your compression ring, 180 degrees from the work side of the engine. So as you can see there, we're approximately 180 degrees away. And that is kind of determined by the location of the next ring. 
So it's recommended that we clock the next ring, the intermediate ring, about 120 degrees away from that. And these rings are sliding around a little bit, but you get the point I'm trying to make. So we're approximately 120 degrees away from that compression ring gap there. And then the oil control ring is gonna be located about 120 degrees away from that intermediate ring. And none of them are lining up above the wrist pin bore right here. That's really important as well. So anyways, I know that was a lot of information and I did my best to try to explain some complicated things there. Lastly, I'm installing my ARP rod bolts. I'm just hand threading them in so that they can be ready to go for when I install this piston in the truck with new rod bearings. All right, shoot your cylinder down. Make sure the hone's lubricated. We're gonna go for five passes. Don't go below the depth of this hone. Be careful of your piston oiler. So the 2004 and a half Cummins 5.9 in frame overhaul is going really well. Wanted to get up underneath the truck and uh, show you guys something that many of you guys know, but it's uh, if somebody's doing this for the first time, this might help. We have cylinder five rod up there with the new rod bearing. And uh, I have the piston rings compressed with the piston ring compressor. And I'm slowly guiding that rod down square with this crank journal right here. This is super important, especially with these piston, uh, these squirters up here, these oilers, because the rod has a tendency to slide on the wrist pin back towards the squirter when you hang that piston, when, that, when you hang that rod down in there. So, Basically, you're gonna to wanna to tap your piston very slowly and very carefully. You should never be beating on it like some ham-fisted half-wit trying to get a piston in, especially one of these nice 5.9 blocks because you can, you can rip that oiler right off there, bend it really badly, and then you're gonna fry that cylinder, basically. So be very careful and work smoothly and intelligently when you're putting these together and you'll be absolutely fine. You know, this this beating on, trying to yank on things and slam things together, that ain't gonna fly with an engine like this, especially with the amount of money that you probably have invested in it. Just take your time, keep everything oiled and, you know, work smart. But you can see, Don't rush this process. You can see kind of how tight that is there. And just carefully tap it in, get up under the truck, check it, and you'll be good to go.